Hi, thanks for watching Aquarium Tech today. Uh, today I was going to do a video on PAR. Um, before you watch this video, you might want to watch the nanometer one, uh, and even the Kelvin one that I put out a while ago. Uh, it might help you understand this a little bit better, but and that's the reason I put the nanometer one out, because because uh, I was going to do PAR, but then I kind of realized, you know, for for some of you that. Uh, you know, might not know what it is, you know, I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, so anyways, uh, basically PAR is an abbreviation for photosynthetically active radiation, okay? Now, uh, basically in definition, it's basically supposed to be the photosynthetic response from plants and corals and stuff. Now, it's not necessarily useful light, okay, that's something different, that's something called PER, okay, uh, PAR is a little bit different, and especially for, uh, for those of you guys that do salt water, you guys probably know all about PAR, and, you know, there, there's always people testing, especially in the LEDs, well, one thing I'm big into is LEDs, and you always hear about people testing the new LEDs and stuff, and, uh, you know, they usually measure, uh, it's light and par. It, it's not the most. It's not the most accurate. Like from, from what I've seen, per would probably be a little bit better thing to use. But you know, I'm not a scientist. Uh, I'm sure there's tons of people that are way better in that field than me, so I might be wrong. Par is 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 generally what they is what they use for that. And and also as a note, uh, par isn't necessarily a visible light either. Okay. That, that's why uh, I think I've mentioned it before. A lot of people, you know, will say, oh, LEDs aren't this bright. They're supposed to be this bright and blah, blah, blah. But then you put like a PAR meter up to it and the thing is like off the charts, you know. Uh, and, and, a, and a lot of people don't understand that. PAR isn't necessarily visible light, okay? So uh, for those of you that have LEDs, you know, as, as long as it's working, as long as your plants or your corals are growing, you're, you're fine. Just because it doesn't look bright doesn't mean it is. Ex except for the marine lands. Those ones really... Well, actually, the reef-capable ones aren't too bad, but the other ones. But anyways, moving along. So, and basically, the, the spectrum... The, basically, PAR's spectrum is between 400 and 700 nanometers, okay? So, but and that's basically what's needed by... Plants and zoo and lithetic algae. I can never pronounce it. Here, I'll get my computer to pronounce it for you guys. It's it's basically the cells. It, it's the cells in coral that make them grow. That react to photosynthesis because you know corals are animals. But it's the it's it's the uh, well, why they require light. It's the algae and the cells inside them that grow them. Here, I'll have my computer pronounce it for you guys because I'm not the best at that. Zoo and lithetic algae. I don't know if you guys could hear that. Zoo and lithetic cell algae. All right. And there's actually like different types. I, I believe there's a few different types of it, you know, depending on uh, the coral, clams, or uh, what is it, anemones, and stuff like that. So I hope I covered this in the, in the uh, nanometer spectrum video that it kind of starts at UVA. And I believe it goes all up to, you know, between UVB uh, even UVC, but, but remember, like I said, that the UVC is what's in your, uh, UV sterilizers, and like I said, it, because it has such a, uh, short wavelength and high frequency, it can actually be damaging to, uh, you, you know, plants and corals, that's why sometimes you, you can actually get a bleaching effect from having too much actinic light, all right. I'm sure you guys have heard of that, especially you saltwater guys. And also, I'm going to bring up a graph for you guys here. There's multiple spikes on the PAR scale in reaction to uh, in, in reaction to to certain types of light or nanometers. Because in I don't I don't know if I've said this before, but even with like plants and stuff. That, that, that's, that's why I've said before, you know, even if you buy, like, one of those core light fixtures and it has a, uh, like, for instance, an antennae bulb, there's still useful light in that, even though it probably will grow algae. Algae likes blue light, especially in freshwater 
uh, aquariums. Uh, you know, there is some useful light in there for the freshwater plants, so you know you can run that bulb until it dies, but you know you don't want to overdo it. But anyways, here's a nice little graph. Here, I'll bring it up on my computer. I'll, I'll see if I can't put it on the video. As you guys know, I'm probably not the best video editor or anything. But as you can tell, there's actually a few spikes on here, and there's a few main ones. There's one here being A, B, and C is how it labels. I actually took this off some site off the internet. Uh, I believe I found a link for it on AmericanAquariumProducts.com. Great guys on there. They're definitely uh, they'll definitely always hook you up with good stuff, and they definitely got some good information on there. But um, anyways, ba basically this is kind of like a graph of par. Down here you have nanometers, okay? And uh, and remember that the lower the nanometer, the higher the frequency is. And as you can see, there's the blue and purple light here. Over here you have your infrared and and uh redder colors and stuff over here which is the longer wavelength higher nanometers and the most important spike is here all right that's like your that's like your uh 60 those are like your daylight bulbs your 6500 kelvin that's even the most important for corals now uh i've probably mentioned this in other videos as well is that you still want to use blue or light because the or you got to remember where the corals are in their natural environment, you know, that, that's kind of what they're used to. So if they're lower in the ocean, it gets bluer as you go down. So that's why you have, that, that's why reef aquariums have the, the bluer lights and stuff to accommodate for, for having those corals farther down. And blue light tends to penetrate farther, all right? But, you know, and, and, and another thing is that, you know, fresh water doesn't have that effect as much. It's easier for the light to penetrate. And of course, uh, it's usually shallower too where it grows, you know, the ocean's a lot deeper than most freshwater places and that's why the 6500, 6700 Kelvin bulbs are the best. They have the, you know, they have the, uh, the, the redder, uh, spectrum. Uh, I don't know, I'm trying to think of the word I was thinking of, but yeah, basically redder spectrum. That's a, that's a, uh, e e easy way to put it, for instance, looking at the scale. So, and of course you can see there's multiple spikes here. All right. And I'll explain it what each of those spikes mean and all of them correlate to all you, you know whether it's coral or plants all right and basically what a is and a was the one that was closer uh the, the closest but it was basically the uv uv uh, uh uv basically closest to the uvc the, the bluer light and stuff uh which basically is a phototropic response all right, and I believe phototropic response, response is basically a response from plants or corals or whatever it is uh, to basically move towards the light, all right? They, they, they're basically want to get closer to the light and, uh, or, or any positive, uh, you know, s source of uh, nutrients, so. Uh, and then B, which was more towards the you know the middle the yellow and the greenish light uh, is basically the photosynthetic response, which is the process which begins from light is from light is absorbed by proteins called photosynthetic reaction centers that contain chlorophylls. Now, as another note, another reference I took I actually took that one directly from AmericanAquariumProducts.com. All right, I actually took that that one from their site because I actually didn't even know about that one, so. All right, now C, like I said, which was the most important one, which is, you know, in the 6,500 Kelvin spectrum or area, you know, the, the, the yellow red light according to the nanometer scale here, is pro like I said, it's probably the most important, but chlorophyll synthesis is basically, you should know, you should have learned this in grade school. You know, chlorophyll is basically what turns, uh, you know, c carbon dioxide and uh, light basically into nutrients and food and sugars and glucose and stuff like that. It, it, it's, and it's basically one of the chemical precursors to a lot of that stuff. So uh, that that's why that's the most ex uh, eh, most important. I almost said most expensive. Uh, part or uh, spike there in the par scale 
And remember, once again, that scale, basically on one side, on, on the, up. Uh, here, let me bring it back up again, just to make sure I was clear about this. The up and down right here, that's the response. That's the response from the plants and the corals, okay? And then down here is the nanometers, okay? So like I said, it's what PAR is, photosynthetically active radiation, which is basically, uh, you know, the res basically the response from the uh, living organisms. So, and also as another note, like like, like I said, PAR doesn't actually mean uh, visible light. So. Basically, you can't. Uh, there, there's a lot of people I, I've seen out there that like to, that, you know, they'll have even like Lumen or even Lux meter, something like that. And and I'll probably do those too soon for the lighting series. And and there's there is a conversion I believe I've seen before to, to to at least try to get an estimate of par, but that doesn't necessarily mean it is. I mean, you could have a super bright light that has like no useful energy for or, or no, nothing that really reacts to plants. Or, or ear corals and it could be the brightest thing ever and you know it, it wouldn't necessarily be true so so it's kind of a little confusing thing there and uh, that, that's why it's, it's it's not a bad it's not a bad way it's probably one of the best ways to measure you, you know good light for aquariums but like I said in my from what I've learned it's you know you could probably use per better which is photosynthetically useful radiation so that that would seem like a better way to go on that but anyways oh and also when, when they measure par it's done in micromoles i believe yeah micromoles that that that's the way that it's it's a type of energy that they measure it in and, and i believe that's the way they do it you know they don't use nanometers nanometers is just to uh basically find out what responds best to the plants as like a scale kind of so all right and i think that's about it talking about general par here uh you can probably get a good under good understanding from this video from basically what par is now remember it's not necessarily useful but you know what what they react to all right so i guess that's about it if i'm missing anything uh, you know, you can go ahead and ask me a question or let me know. And of course, I can always do a more in-depth video because I know this is a pretty, uh, the, uh, a pretty talked about thing in aquatics, alright? I guess that's about it, so, uh, thanks for tuning in.